some of the people celebrating Christmas early this year, I suspect, are the country's teachers. Eh? Today is D-Day for them. The Ministry of Education says that 11,540 active eligible teachers across Trinidad and Tobago will receive their back pay with December 2023 salaries today. Payments for the remaining 10% of active teachers will continue to be processed and is estimated to be completed by December 31st, 2023. Payments for retired teachers will pro be processed subsequently. On the line this morning, we do have the president of the Trinidad and Tobago Unified Teachers Association, Mr. Martin Lumpkin. Mr. Lumpkin, good morning. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Good morning, Mr. Hopkinson. Compliments of the season to you, your family. The family at TV6, One me Caribbean Media, and by extension, Trinidad and Tobago. Good yes. morning and thank you for having me. Uh, Mr. Lumpkin, uh, thank you very much. And, and let me just tell you before we begin, eh, um, next week, I believe it's, uh, it's going to be a year since I've started doing this uh, program. And I think, Mr. Lumpkin, you were the first person that I interviewed. So <laughs> I want to say thank you to you. And, of course, we have, we have discussed a lot of things um, over the past year. Um, thank you uh, to you and your team, Mr. Dwarka. Yeah, also he has appeared on this program. Thank you to all of you for sharing your perspectives this year. And thank you for your continuous support. So uh, thank you to you, Mr. Dwarka, and also um, all uh, the rest of your team at Tutor. We do appreciate it. You're welcome. Yeah. And we are honored to be on your program. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lumpkin. Well, of course, all right. So, as I said, today is D-Day for, for teachers. I suspect um, you all are very happy today, Mr. Lumpkin. We are, by and large, pleased that the majority of our educators will be given their increase in salary and the subsequent back pay. Um, let me say, though, that uh, I find the figures a little off. Um, they are roughly... To our estimation, 14,000 um, educators, teachers, and, and so on. And 10% um, would be more, more in the, the range of about 1,500. So therefore, it should be roughly more than 11,000. However, we are sub, um, subject to correction. That's by our estimation. That's one. Two, please permit me to disabuse in the minds of some of the persons out there especially in the government of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. This is not a gift to our educators. This is what we would have settled and this is what is legally um, owed to our educators. It's, it's not what we would have liked to. We were dealt a bad hand. Uh, we were subject to the, to the to circumstances of the day. And so we, in the best interest of our educators, we would have settled. And we were looking forward to this day with the implementation of the new salary and the subsequent back pay. Um, we are appreciative of the fact that the ministry and by extension, the government would have um, put out as much as they did. It could have been better. I mean, there's always room for improvement because you have 10% of the education um, sector, the workers and as teachers, educators, not getting it before um, the, the, the payday. However, we are still hopeful. This is the season of hope. This is the season, you know, that we feel that um, there will be the supplemental um, salary list and that the remaining would get it in a timely fashion. Um, we are thankful for the fact that, you know, the efforts was made, but we are also saddened by the fact that um, some of our educators uh, especially, I have to say, and I'll boldly say, it, some of our members, uh, because we represent persons in the sector and we represent the members, and we are certain that our members are not able to get it at this time. But we're hoping the new salary would be put in as, as um, before they get the um, impending back pay. Yeah. I'm also seeing here that payments for retired teachers will be processed subsequently. Is there a time frame for that? They have... Um, the Ministry of Education has indicated that as soon as this process is completed, because it's much less than the in-service persons. And let me also point out that tutor executive members, we who were in the teaching service, we will be in that, that batch of persons as well too. 
So it's really in-service persons they do first. And then those who are not in the service retirees included as well. Um, we will get it after. So um, we are in that batch as well, too. I, I want to say that, you know, we and, and we understand. We understand the magnitude. We, uh, you know, applaud the ministry. We, you know, um, know what it takes because we knew that from the beginning. This is a, a matter of 14,000 teachers for six years. Um, calculations of the, well, the salary would be relatively straightforward, but the impending back pay, and then it has to be audited. And, and that's a big, big task. Um, unfortunately, some have not gotten it. It's not surprising, totally surprising to us, but um, it's unfortunate. And we stand with those who have not gotten their back pay. Yeah. But what about, um, because we did speak about this difference in the numbers, the ministry is saying 11,540, you're saying over 14,000. So I suspect that there may be teachers this morning who are looking at us and, and are saying, well, I wonder if I fall into the 3,000 uh, the, the, the 3, that are not being accounted for. What do you tell them? The Ministry of Education, we had a meeting yesterday with the Ministry. I spoke with one of the DPSs who is directly involved in the process. And he has assured us that those who were left out will be given at least to the end of December. We are hopeful. I did make representation um, that to try to have it at least by the end of the week, if you can get as many persons captured within that period, I sympathize with them because I know they were looking for their expe expectations were that they would get it in time to have it to, you know, to utilize for the Christmas period. But um, at, at this point in time, there's nothing the union can really do. The ministry is on the hands of the ministry and I, and they have promised. We will, I will, um, I will say though that we will monitor it on their behalf. That is our members. Yeah. Mr. Lumpkin, as you reflect on 2023, let's, let's, let's deal with some, some of the successes in education and then we'll move on to the challenges because I know that the challenges have been many and I, I, sus I suspect that some of them still exist. But uh, what do you think are some of the uh, biggest successes in education uh, in 2023? The, the fact that our educators continue under challenging conditions to educate the majority of our students. Um, we have individual successes. I've heard of stories, um, incidents where teachers were able to change the direction in which some of our students were going. Um, I, I looked at the um, after school program, that remedial program, and uh, we are seeing some improvement in the majority of the schools. So that is a success in terms of the Ministry of Education and the dedication of our educators as well too, administrators. So you have instances, you saw, we saw improvement in some areas in CSEC, CAPE, as well as in SEA. We saw improvement um, and, and those are the successes. There are schools who are performing um, human service, service beyond the call of duty, uh, which we need to highlight as well too. They, they are going beyond the call of duty and they are touching the lives of not only the students, the families in the community, the community and Trinidad and Tobago by extension. Yeah. Uh, teachers, you think, in a good place physically and mentally as you look forward to 2024? At this time, I will say the majority uh, are on a, a tipping balance. Um, they are um, utilizing whatever coping skills that they have. Um, we are seeing by um, more and more schools having challenges of infrastructure. And again, I will acknowledge the challenges, the financial challenges of the Ministry of Education. Um, but I still feel that more can be done. The Ministry is looking at just emergency cases of school. But what about those schools where, which are deteriorating and deteriorating fast, um, quickly? Sorry, And that bears down on our educators. The amount of paperwork that is being asked of our administrators and by extension our teachers is putting a lot of pressure on them as well too. 
and and we are seeing more and more of our teachers becoming um, exhausted, drained, um, even burnt out as well too, due to the fact of the um, learning loss and the fact as well that our teachers care so much for our, our children that they go beyond the call of duty. So yes, a lot of teachers, I don't have statistics or numbers to say, but from our feedback, um, quite a bit of our teachers are complaining and they are actually looking forward to retirement um, soon. Yeah. Now, I know that earlier this year we would have spoken about things like school security, safety and security of the nation's schools. We have spoken about dilapidated structure. Is it that during this period here where school is out, are attempts taken by the Ministry of Education uh, to, uh, to refurbish these schools and uh, put it in a state uh, where students can occupy it in the new year? Okay, so... Um Please permit me, I left out the, the student violence and the discipline, yes. which has been growing. And that puts a lot of pressure and emotional strain on our teachers. So that is a factor as well. In terms of this vacation, it's a short period, three weeks, but the Ministry of, Ed of Education has engaged in some form of repairs and they have told us it will only be emergency cases at this time. So if, uh, if there's the impending threat of shutdown, then they will intervene. However, there are schools that are on the brink of um, shutting down. And I feel that if preparations are taken well in advance, then they can identify these schools, even if it's a three week um, period, start some of the works and they have continued works on afternoons and weekends um, to complete um, once you know it, what is left is, is fit for occupation. And these things can be done. The challenge, again, they are telling us is the financial situation. Um, I, I feel that monies can be found in order to have at least schools up to a uh, standard of occupation so that health and safety is not threatened. Yeah. And let's return to the issue of violence of the nation schools. We're still seeing, well, school is out. So just before that, we were still seeing incidents of violence at the nation schools. I know that in recent times, the Minister of Education um, has spoken about the ministry actively dealing with such matters and um, uh, speaking about students uh, being expelled. And we have seen students being uh, expelled uh, when they engage in such, in such dastardly acts. We're seeing people being stabbed at schools, people being beaten. All sorts of things are happening in and outside of the school environment uh, being committed by students. Um, what do you think much uh, should be done in the new year? I suspect much more has to be done, but what, what, what are some of the suggestions and recommendations that you can give this morning? Okay, so dealing with violence and indiscipline is not only confined to the school or just outside the environment. This is a societal issue and so the Ministry of Education, the Minister of Education is part of a cabinet and cabinet has to, to me, seriously look at the factors that contribute and enable violence in society. Because as we have always said, the school is a microcosm of the community and the country by extension. So there has to be interventions, not only at the level of the Ministry of Education and I have to say, education has to be seen as a vehicle, as the means to get um, persons out of the present situation, whether it's economic or otherwise. Um, we have to have that sight of vision and vision of education. And secondly, there are programs within the Ministry of Education that can assist as well too. Now, we have always said Student Support Services Division, SSSD, is one of those units that can really lend support to the school. But if they are understaffed and under-resourced, and I am appealing again to the Ministry of Education, the powers that be, that we need to have more resources for SSSD, our school um, guidance officers, our social workers, um, special education um, teachers, and so, if we can get some level of support there, then you're going to see results. Also, there are other programs 
uh, mediation, peer counseling, peer mediation that can work as well too, uh, as well as empowering our teachers such that they um, can have a, a level. Now, remember, teachers are not trained in these areas. We utilize whatever skills we have coming up from our experience. But by and large, we are not we are not skilled in that area. If there's some um, initial and basic level of intervention that we can perform, um, you know, we will we will be happy to do it. But it cannot be our duty um, because our job description um, speaks mainly of delivery of curriculum. However, we can lend some support as well as the other areas, school security officers, these, these security um, officers as well too. And you know, all of these things working together with other institutions and organizations, we can put a dent in it and start the ball, ball rolling and getting, you know, um, getting it down um, bit by bit and by and large. Yeah. Have you all seen any change in the environment? re-violence at the nation schools following the minister's uh, statements and and also speaking about uh, trouble some students being put into the mylat program have you seen any change at all in the in the in the environment in the behavior of, of students we have not been able to see any reasonable changes um and and probably it's a bit too soon we don't know but we ourselves have a little concern about that announcement as well. Um, in terms of the MyLAT, we are willing to assist or we will support any program. But there are consequential um, issues that surround it as well that really needs to be um, looked at. And in terms of suspension and expulsion, tutor gets no joy in having any of our students expelled or suspended. Um, however, we will support when it is necessary, when the relevant interventions have been tried um, and it's not successful, then we will support. But we are also saying if there are other programs, because when you suspend or expel a child, the child is out in the environment doing basically nothing and can be influenced by other bodies outside there and can come back into the school if they are suspended. Um, worse than when they left. So there has to be, I know years ago, the Ministry of Education had uh, out of school suspension centers and programs. <laughs> it's something that could be looked at again. Um, we are not saying that my lot is, is bad totally, but remember there are, for, for example, you cannot force the parents to do it. They have to um, volunteer to, to enroll the, the child. And then it's from 16 onwards. And it's only for males. Um, what about our female students? What about the children um, who are younger than 16? So there are you know, certain elements that need to be thought of carefully before it's implemented. It may be, we're not saying that it's not, it may be a solution, but it has to be thought of very carefully. Um, and, and other, it cannot be the panacea um, for, for the, the problem. There must be other supporting um, programs that that will be there as well. So you have um, scouts and you have girl guides and so on. That can help as well if we if we boost up those programs to help you know the students as well. And and you know let's see how it goes. But it has to be done very carefully and meticulously. Do we have you think a skewed perception as to what? is transpiring in the school environment because sometimes I think and this is just a personal view that sometimes on social media on the in the mainstream media we sometimes see a lot of negative videos pictures as to what is happening in the school environment and I feel sometimes that we are being influenced by what we are seeing on the social media and so on and sometimes I think, do we really have such a bad situation in the school environment? Or is it that we are, our thinking is skewed because of what we are seeing? And, and you're you know, correct to say that there, there may be some amount of um, one-sided thinking 
or skewed um, thoughts on it. Um, it's always said, someone can do a thousand good th acts yes. and they do one bad act and they are they are criticized but they are and ostracized but they are judged by that one bad act and in our education system i will be first to admit there are many many success stories in our schools under trying situations let me just point out yes um and, and we, we we talk about um prestige school versus government schools and so on palo seco secondary school I can point out this because I, I was there when they got the results. They got in the top 10 in CSEC in social studies. Two of their students, Palo Seco Secondary School, um, I believe it's social studies, and they got a top 10 in agricultural science. These are successes that are not normally put into the public domain, but a number of other schools have been doing great work um, I was at last this year, San Fernando East Secondary, which used to be Pe Pleasantville Junior Secondary. And they had an artwork um, of the students on the wall, murals uh, and so on. And the beauty that they were creating amongst this um, 50, 51 year old school where the infrastructure was you know, going down, but the students expressed their art and they, you know, they were able to, um, uplift the environment but there are many many more um so these one or two incidents well it's more than one or two let me firstly say it's more than what we should really have but because it's highlighted so often we feel that it takes place in all our schools it takes place in some of the schools um, one too many one school with violence is one too many so the amount we are getting and sometimes it's, it's actually kind of spreading to other schools and schools are trying within the environment to prevent it, but the students are going outside um, and, and continuing the violence because they can't do it in the school. And persons with camera phones are posting it throughout. And, and that's the, you know, the bad publicity that we are getting. But I can say the majority of our schools have been doing excellent work, have been trying with their students. And we are tutor. Um, we have attempted and we will continue to highlight these schools and our teachers. We have our teacher of the year coming up, which we um, would normally highlight teachers who have done excellent work in education, community work, et cetera. And that's one of the ways we are going to be um, promoting our teachers and the work that they do. Yeah, Mr. Lumpkin, as we come to the end of our discussion for this morning, anything else you'd like to add, sir? At this time, let me wish everyone a safe holiday season, Christmas, a bright and prosperous 2024. We are looking forward to 2024. And to assure persons that tutor will be on the cusp of our, all the issues and we will make representation to our members, continued representation. We will do the best that we can. I wish you and your family all the best. And to know that um, from this January 1st, we will be out there looking at, um, well, 1st of January is holiday, 2nd of January. Mm -hmm. We'll be out there, you know, making sure we represent our teachers. Um, there are some outstanding issues at the ministry that we will be um, making serious representation on. Yeah. Uh, Tutor President Martin Lumpkin, sir, it's always a pleasure speaking with you. A happy Christmas to you. Don't spend too much of the back pay. Save some for next year. <laughs> I'm not getting mine for, for, for Christmas, so I'll have to. <laughs> so I, 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 it's good advice to our teachers as well, to our educators. Don't spend all now. <laughs> so, Mr. Lumpkin, see you next year. Bye for now. Thank you very much. Okay. So it's time for another break. We do have this picture for you. It's from Sham Sahadeu, a sunrise. Yeah, Sham, thank you very much for the picture. We're coming back, everybody. Rinder